The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of our trading hour with me. And of course, you're here at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on today? We're up just a little bit. Of course, the last of the kind of the hangover money and the S&P kind of coming in. Generally, you want to get these big moves about three days before they peak out. Uh, they don't let uh, people on the wrong side out easily. Uh, so we're up uh, about 10 points on the S&P cash, down 50 on the Dow, NASDAQ up 95. And, of course, uh, we're probably going to see the NASDAQ outperform as we see more inflation and uh, it's harder to uh, borrow money. Uh, those other two uh, much more susceptible to uh, – the uh, the uh, companies uh, li uh, not liquidating, but uh, diluting more shares to raise cash or have to pay more money for bonds, money, uh, a lot of other things like that. But right now, we've got kind of a, a market that's a little bit strange in that everybody's kind of just saying, we're going to get through it, we're going to get through it, we're going to get through it. But I don't think uh, we're going to have a fairly good Christmas season for the retailers. Um, a lot of people just kind of looking the other way. Apple uh, actually doing its uh, dog and pony today on some new laptops. Uh, it's up a buck. It's That's kind of just with the market. Um, TLT is up 85 cents. Uh, that's really come off uh, the lows uh, when... It was readily apparent that the bond vigilantes didn't have to sell everything or keep selling everything. And, uh, you know, we had a little bit of uh, China worries. Um, some of that money coming here into the United States. But uh, I'm going to say we're in an overheated market. The volume is pathetic for today. Uh, you'd want to see something in the neighborhood of 70, 7.5 billion shares on the CBOE consolidated tape. Uh, we have about 5.8 billion shares so far. So no sign of strength, no follow through. This uh, generally looks like a big trading range from about 33.50-ish now for support uh, to about uh, 44.75 at resistance. And we'll see. We've got a lot of earnings coming up this week. Uh, we'll go through those today. And that's kind of it. I think there were some problems we're just not going to get past uh, anytime easily. Uh, we've got the, the whole uh, thing with uh, the ports. Mostly it's the Long Beach ports. Uh, there, You always have these unintended consequences of uh, having legislation. And, of course, about a year and a half, two years ago, uh, everybody uh, in the uh, political vein of uh, California wanted uh, the Uber drivers and Lyft drivers to all be employees so they'd get free medical and all the other stuff. By being employees uh, in California, they would get. So they passed this grand law. And uh, what they, a lot of people didn't think about was uh, that it affected uh, uh um, over-the-road truck drivers who were uh, basically their own bosses. Well, you can't uh, load or unload uh, any of those trucks in the port of Long Beach. Uh, you have to work for a company, and that company has to hire from the union workers. So <clears throat> could we have uh, 80,000 trucks uh, and drivers there in the next couple of days to haul all this stuff off and get stuff moving again? We could. But it ain't going to happen. It doesn't look like there's any budging uh, so far in the um, uh, in that vein for what's going on. So this may go on for a long time till somebody finally sells, says we can't 
we just can't stand it any longer. And someone goes out there and has a word with the governor of, of California to get things moving. But, you know, maybe it doesn't. Maybe this is uh, what they're looking for. You never know. It's hard to tell what's inside someone. But uh, you'd think that they would have moved by now if they understood the gravity of the problem. So I, I'm getting ready to start writing off uh, any of these retailers for Christmas. Uh, but that's it. Uh, we're going to start hearing what a lot of these retailers do say uh, over the next few weeks. This week, a uh, few other things. Uh, going to be interesting to find out tomorrow morning what Kansas City Southern says uh, about what they do. Of course, uh, about what is it, about 60 or 70 percent of all those uh, containers end up on uh, semi-rigs eventually, but most of the time they go on trains uh, to get it at least halfway across the country uh, before they start letting the uh, over the uh, you know the truck drivers that drive three or four hundred miles uh, to deliver stuff. So we'll see about that. But uh, in the meantime, uh, I want us to do a little history, and then we'll get into those earnings and earnings and earnings this week. Oh yeah, trucks older than twenty eleven not allowed either. Forgot about that. Uh, and it's history repeating. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 1878, the U.S. formally takes possession of Alaska after purchasing the territory from Russia for $7.2 million. I got that, I think, uh, over there might change for. Uh, or less than two cents an acre, indigenous people settled the unforgiving territory thousands of years earlier. The Alaska Purchase compromised uh, 586,000 square miles, about twice the size of Texas, and was championed by William Seward, uh, who the uh, enthusiastically uh, was the Secretary of State under Andrew, Andrew Don. I can't even talk. Andrew Johnson. Uh, Seward was one of the uh, folks uh, tried to kill, uh, be killed in the uh, in the uh, uh, aftermath of Lincoln. In fact, I think they went to him first. Uh, he had a big slash uh, on his, uh, I think, on a leg and on his face uh, from that night. And a lot of the uh, uh, the uh, seditionists uh, were going after him. They called it Seward's folly, made fun of him. But much like uh, things here just lately, we found out maybe he was a lot smarter than a lot of people gave him credit for. And, of course, now probably one of the best deals ever made for land, uh, even if it's bad land. They're not making more of it or much more of it anymore. It's always a good deal. As we get back, uh, as we said, uh, Kansas City Southern in the morning, uh, we'll start popping up uh, charts uh, for that. And looking forward uh, to the rest of uh, what happens this week. But I'm going to say we're probably, this is about as good as it gets. Wouldn't be surprised to start seeing a little bit of selling uh, right at the close today. That'd be a pretty good indication uh, that we've seen the end of uh, those people on margin getting out uh, if they were short. And uh, those that were long, maybe eh, pulling back in a little bit, taking a little bit off the table. We'll be back in a minute. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TESS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TESS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TESS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Back, uh, first question out of the gate today is from uh, Michael. He says, um, Can you please share your thoughts on ASML holdings? I'm not exactly sure what if he's uh, asking about uh, fundamental or on the charts. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with ASML, uh, this company is the heart of all uh, all uh, chip development. If you've ever made a silkscreen uh, T-shirt or seen one made, uh, that's kind of how chips are actually made. Uh, one layer at a time, uh, they'll put some uh, stuff down. And they build it kind of like a skyscraper, one level at a time. They come by, they'll polish part of it off. There's a mask. Uh, they'll uh, put uh, ultraviolet and x-rays against it. It's, uh, you know, just a ton of, of repetitive processes that all have to be perfect for a chip to work. Well, as you get smaller and smaller and smaller, and now we have billions of pro uh, transistors on a chip the size, half the size of a postage stamp, um, you've got to make, the the light is a problem. It, it literally, even the waves in light are too big. So they've gone to x-rays and uh, some other stuff. Uh, anyway, there's some even some newer techniques now to make the stuff better, faster, bigger. Uh, but the, 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 the the machine that makes the silk screen for these chips is ASML. Hopefully everybody can tell me if I explain this easy enough. You don't need to make one. You just need to understand what they do. But because uh, it is such a specialized branch of physics uh, and engineering that no one else really has uh, the magic of, uh, it is for all practical purposes, a monopoly. So the problem is that they make these machines. The machines make the silk screen for the chips. They make about 24 to 30 of these machines a year. 
it the lead time is about 18 months um, and you know you just have to order these things when not in a pandemic when you suddenly need them uh, but uh, you know you need to know that you're coming up on it now of course this technology is always involved are always evolving and you're always trying to make it a little bit better so on a fundamental scale ASML a monopoly hard to not invest in monopolies the problem is they just can't it's not like they made 30 machines last year and they can say we'll, we'll make 45 this year it takes a long time to turn that ship around uh 150 million dollars per sale you know what there's probably a little bit of engineering and getting it installed and support and everything else that they sell but that's it um, they hire the right folks. Uh, they go out and get them out of uh, PhD schools. Um, it's a very uh, small group, and of course, they're all up where in Norway or Denmark, or they're somewhere up there in the fjords. And uh, they have a very nice life. Uh, a lot of people from the United States have gone to work for them up there and other places around the globe. You just have to be uh, the most brilliant people in the world to understand uh, the quantum physics level of stuff and the way it acts, not the way you believe, but the way it does, uh, which is weird. Everything's weird. In fact, uh, probably the guy that knew it the best in 1960 said, if you think you understand it, you don't. Um, and that's it. You're just never going to really understand it. You just kind of have to fight through it. Um, on the engineering so a very finite skill a lot of black magic uh it's everything you want in a company uh their moat is the size of the atlantic and the pacific it's just how many machines get ordered and there's not a lot of difference um so this is not one of these things where the winds of change really changes anything maybe they uh, don't deliver one machine but right now someone would pick it up so it's not like these people are going anywhere anytime soon. Um, just kind of a big trading range as people kind of look forward to what they're doing. Uh, I think the only other company is Intel that really kind of is in competition with these, go uh, these guys do. And really, Intel is kind of a second tier uh, developer. But all the machines that make all the stuff at TSM come from ASML and uh, they just make them a little better every year they get a little better and uh, when you really think about it that's the way that they make chips today it's like making a high rise one level after another each level gets sanded washed uh, exposed with stuff stuff put on it uh, re-sanded and then they do another level on another level on another level um, of course everybody always talks or not everybody, but most of the people in the industry talk about um, 10 nanometers and 5 nanometers and 3.5 and nanometers. Well, there isn't the ability to make anything that small. What they're really talking about is if you have one transistor and you put another transistor on top of it, how close can you get to it? Well, they'll offset it just a little bit, uh, kind of like uh, Lego, where you just move it one little uh, set of uh, nubs over to the right and it's a little over that and that's kind of it closer you can get those um but you're stacking them high to do it everything's really about 15 or 20 nanometers away anyway it's just how they can move things around and make them in 3d space close to each other anyway great company um one of these kind of quiet companies you never hear much about they're going to do well into the future uh, if everything starts getting going, my guess is they'll probably sell a few more machines than they sold the year before. But everybody's always waiting for them for the next big thing, which is a uh, uh, the ability to make stuff just a little bit smaller, closer together. Uh, every little bit you can bring those things together uh, is less power that you use and less heat that you uh, expose especially for things uh, like uh, headsets and VR equipment. Um, getting stuff smaller 
is less power and less heat, and that's kind of the holy grail. Whether you're making a, a uh, iPhone or you're making, um, you know, uh, the kind of equipment for, you know, let's say uh, like earbuds or uh, augmented uh, reality glasses, it's all in there. As far as uh, this goes, eh, you got kind of a light volume bounce out here. My guess is this thing is going to play around a little bit uh, in maybe an 820 to 740 range for a while, go a little sideways until next year, where I think they're, I'm afraid they're going to start delivering a lot more of those newer machines on the three nanometer scale. Well, I was going to talk about two minutes, ended up doing the whole segment on AS. ML. I'd say going sideways for a little while. Much more next year. We'll be back in a minute. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading market and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We had a follow-up question from uh, somebody else. I think it was Jack. Uh, about Intel and how well they do in this uh, part of the business and uh, Intel does well in packaging. Um, there's really three major parts of uh, semiconductors. There's uh, the design, uh, manufacturing, and packaging. Packaging is, um, you wouldn't think about it, but it is one of the critical things for making everything work. And there's as much magic in that as many other things. Uh, but for Intel, um, 
they yelled and screamed with a big press release, I think, last Monday, maybe 10 days ago, somewhere in there, uh, about uh, them moving to this latest technology that they have, like ASML. Uh, and uh, uh, the problem was that they were doing that five years ago. So Intel was patting themselves on the back for only being five years late. Um, just I, It just shows you how... Uh, much that these guys decided to keep uh, working on technology, uh, the future technology, but never implement it. And by never implementing it, they found uh, fell behind, and it's still problematic. Uh, Intel's got kind of a nice base out here. It's not a business going away. They've got some fairly decent new chips coming out. It's just really tough right now because everybody's behind uh, team AMD uh, for lower end processors, not like server chips. Uh, but uh, with its big popularity, it's been able to push at least and get a foot in the door of uh, where Intel really makes its money, which is in these uh, uh, big server places where they sell chips that are $1,500 or 10 grand a piece. Uh, and I think they sell one that's actually 20 grand. I don't know how many they sell of those. But when you're talking about selling something that sells for maybe 50 or 75 bucks in someone's home PC, they really kind of just look the other way. Uh, Andy Grove, who was kind of the real big guy at Intel in the uh, 70s and 80s that really helped it grow, wrote a book. Uh, he always said, uh, uh, damn it, if we don't eat our own lunch, someone else will. And that's probably the best words that have come back to haunt Intel in the <clears throat> last 10 years. That is, we'll cut down on our ND, we'll make a lot of money, we'll all cash out, and then when we leave, there won't be, I mean, it'll still be a company, and it'll still be smart folk, but it's not what it once. Uh, the old horse is not what she used to be, old Intel. Okay, we're going to get to earnings uh, that I had here. Uh, the first one I wanted to look at was uh, Tuesday morning, J&J. Uh, 6.25 in the morning. So that'll be getting going before we're up. Um, you know, these guys just continue to uh, put a gun in their, uh, in their pants and squeeze the trigger in the front of their pants and hit uh, uh, their giblets. So I don't know what else you can say about it. Uh, it came down on lots of volume. Um, irreparable damage to their name? I don't think so. Everybody kind of just, they still love the smell of talcum powder, even if it does cause cancer. Um, you've got kind of light volume out here going into earnings, but I wouldn't be long the thing. If this, if they just come in line, they're going to get killed. They're going to have to really uh, come out with something that uh, no one else has thought of. Ericsson, uh, the Swedish meatball company, uh, or Swedish uh, semiconductor company, just back up to what should be fairly stiff resistance in the morning. I don't see a lot happening out there. Uh, Halliburton, um, actually the word from... Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, I'm trying to think of the company that does it. I put it put it and post it in the den every Friday. Uh, we're up 10 uh, rigs from last week um, from uh, last, uh, yeah, from last year. Or no, from last week. So a lot of those uh, rigs that were down uh, for the hurricanes that went in and hit Texas and into New Orleans are back online. Uh, you can see companies like uh, Halliburton, who does a lot of services for those things, have been going back up. And, of course, you got a high crude price. The best thing for uh, a, low, uh, a uh, industry that's having a problem is a high price because then everybody gets back to work uh, with more stuff. What is it? Baker Hughes. That's what I've been thinking about. Um, yeah, HP is another one. We'll take a look at it. Uh, but anyway, uh, Halliburton in the morning to uh, to, to, to HP Helmrich and 
pain. Is that what it is? Yeah. Um, another one that's uh, had a nice trip up here. You didn't have a lot of volume. These things are probably a little bit beyond the tips of their skis. You always want it to see when those Baker Hughes numbers really start flowing is generally when we start seeing some kind of high. So I don't know. I don't know if we're going to see these things break out above the resistance level, which is about 35, 36 bucks on this. But we only have a day to weigh. Wait, not much going on it. Uh, the other one I wanted to look at, uh, and I'll be watching closely in the morning to see how things go, because I think even if uh, these individual stocks do a little better, I, it's, I think it's very tough to see a market go much higher, at least in the short term. We're up 10 points still on the S&P cash. Uh, Kansas City Southern at the previous high on about a fifth of the volume, though, today. So not uncommon. Everybody kind of waiting what's going on. Uh, this should be doing a lot better. Um, this 300 mark is right there, but you're going up against the September 3rd high that had 1.2 million shares. You got uh, 250 so far today. Uh, even uh, Friday, you had a little under 700,000. So this is not going after those uh, with any kind of gusto. Uh, to, 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 to. Okay, after the bell tomorrow night, uh, we've got Netflix, and I didn't cover it, uh, but uh, late Friday night, uh, the unions did come to an agreement, uh, and pretty much uh, the producers at Netflix and Apple and uh, Amazon, which are really the bulk of all movie video production now, uh, pretty much caved because they knew that they weren't going to get away with it. Um, there was some fairly extensive um, ass uh, during the pandemic that they got away with um, that, you know, in just regular times, no one would have put up with it. And now, of course, uh, feeling the wrath of the Hollywood uh, uh, unions, um, not a lot happening out here. This, I think this could have been a much bigger deal for them. Uh, but Netflix tomorrow night, I uh, just kind of go on sideways into it. See if there's any reaction to Disney. Disney had the bigger problem, although they're down today. Should have looked a little bit better. Uh, just 13 million shares back in a uh, 13 million share low on the 30th of September. Uh, but the 21st of September had 23 million shares. So you're down here at kind of the bottom end of uh, support on Disney. When we come back, we'll look at Intuitive Surgical and United Airlines. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. And we're back. Uh, I had a quick question from Ron that we'll get back to earnings here. And he says, uh, what happened on Apple? Anything? Of course, not much in the way of movement. But no, um, they've got newer laptops. They're at least a little bit more competitive with what's available on the PC. They're behind. Um, you know, that was, you know, 5% of their business. And it just takes a huge amount of development and uh, expense uh, for what is, you know, max, which are about 7% of the PC or the personal computer market. Um, so I just, you know, they, they talk about it and they love to have people running around with MacBooks and stuff. But man, it's, you know, it's hard to say that the PCs are just uh, continually uh, being, uh, a little bit uh, better. There's just so much more business to do in that. I don't think Apple's going to long term going to be able to compete. And they've made a bunch of uh, mistakes over the last five years on these new laptops uh, from waiting way too long to let a new one out uh, to uh, uh, making various mistakes. So not much going on there. Uh, probably the more interesting part of that whole segment was AMD releasing some new motherboards uh, where they're licensing the Thunderbolt connector uh, on their uh, products. So apparently that deal got done between Intel, if you're not familiar with the Thunderbird connector, or Thunderbird, <laughs> a Thunderbolt connector on a PC or a laptop. Uh, you can have like a uh, high, highfalutin graphics processor outside your laptop or very expensive uh, high resolution monitors. It's a very high speed uh, connection that'll probably be, you'll see a lot more of it in the coming years now that AMD's licensed it too. Uh, so it'll be around a little bit more. And what we were talking about when we left, because my train of thought has always derailed, is uh, Intuitive Surgical, ISRG. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, just hanging out. Everybody, I mean, these guys make a lot of money up front when they come out with something new. Uh, and it's just, uh, it's just uh, you know, a lot of this stuff just looks like it's going to go sideways. We'll see what they have to say tomorrow. I don't see a lot other than those coming up in there. Interactive Brokers tomorrow, WD-40. Uh, water Displacement Formula, number 40. Always love that. Okay, that's uh, for Tuesday. But it's got to be Netflix. Oh, we didn't look at United Airlines. Um, yeah, they're getting uh, lots of protests. Apparently, uh, you can't say the reason why these guys are protesting on YouTube. So I'll have to uh, say nothing. 
But if you want to go research it, there's a reason why the pilots are uh, not too friendly for this. And it may not be a huge risk, but it, you know, there is a risk apparently associated with it and them not being pilots because of it. Uh, but again, uh, our sensors, our big brother uh, lurking over our shoulders everywhere we go. Uh, Stalin would be proud. Okay, what else do we have here? Oh, that's it. We were looking at United Airlines. Um, high high fuel prices are going to kill them, right? That's what we're going to say tomorrow, my guess. Um, pilot shortage, high fuel prices. It's kind of hard to think that these guys are going to just turn over a new leaf tomorrow. My bet would be they're on the uh, uh, would be on the downside. Uh, again, I can't talk about it. <laughs> All we can say is that uh, if you want to know about anything, know about why they lie about what people do, because they do it all the time. Just watch that Sanjay Gupta interview with uh, Joe Rogan. Lie, 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 lie. I don't think these people are able to tell the truth. And, of course, they don't want you calling it on it or calling them on it. Uh, other things. Uh, anyway, what else we have out here? Anyway, that was Intuitive Surgical. Uh, let's go to Wednesday uh, where we have Verizon. I don't think there's going to be a lot of surprise in this one. Um, this thing has just been going lower. Anytime you start having things like 5G, there's a lot of upfront expense. And until they kind of get to the point where that's hit the peak and everything's bottomed out, it's always problematic to be in a carrier company. Uh, Winnebago uh, makes me want to go watch uh, Lost in America again. Isn't that just one of the best movies ever? Yeah. Why can't they make more of those and less of these stupid superhero movies that are just awful, god-awful? And I was in the special effects business, so I like special effects, but it should be part of the story. Anyway, uh, Lost in America, Winnebago, high fuel prices. What else can you say? That's what they'll be talking about uh, on earnings on Wednesday morning. Uh, to ASML on Wednesday morning also. We've already talked about them. Uh, the NASDAQ has earnings. Eh, I don't think there's anything in that. Biogen, that's always a big mover on earnings because they tend to say stuff that a lot of people weren't thinking about. Uh, this is uh, actually a, the chart that you love uh, out here for this one. And that is you take off like a rocket and you come back over a long, long, long period of time. The only thing is you need... Uh, a little bit of consolidation, why this thing goes out on the right-hand side. You don't quite have it yet. But uh, I'll keep, a, a, you know, over a long term, these things tend to look like an EKG, right? The blood pressure thing. Uh, but actually, uh, this is a nice-looking chart. No volume as you get back over here to the 260, 270 kind of side, uh, but not much. Travel Zoo, T-Z-O-O. Uh, to, to 8 a.m. Uh, just going sideways again. Same problems that uh, the airlines have. I think you're probably going to get a little heads up on United Airlines and Travel Zoo. Those should probably trade fairly closely. And can, uh, Canadian Pacific Railway uh, and Night Transportation. Um, hard to not think that these companies are just going to do good since they, uh, we've got such a energy hostile uh, administration now that don't like uh, pipelines, they're going to be going on rails. And it makes sense because uh, one of the biggest contributors is uh, 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 political uh, guys uh, is uh, William Buffett, and he owns all the railroads. So I wouldn't be surprised that uh, some of that cash had a little impact on why the uh, – Pipelines didn't go so far, but got to look good and say to Canadian Pacific. We'll be back in a minute.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis the tiger first mortgage program may be the program for you the best rate on a five-year cd in the country right now according to bankrate.com is paying one percent per year or one thousand dollars per one hundred thousand dollars invested the tiger first mortgage program pays seven percent per year paid monthly on secured high value buildable properties in saint petersburg florida the investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Uh, get ready to wrap up the day. We'll take a few more here. Um, biotech, Travel Zoo. That's kind of it for Wednesday morning. Uh, Tesla on Wednesday night. Um, it's been rocking. And uh, as I, we had a call, didn't look strong a couple of weeks ago. But what I always want to talk about is uh how many people have been shorting and you know you've had some fairly big days 20 percent generally you want people you know 10 12 percent on a daily basis from the finra data um overall people tend to short it in the morning and cover in the afternoon days to cover is still under two days um at this point a lot of people don't go after uh the stocks but uh, you're going back into the highs. You get about half the volume of that $900 uh, high. You know, uh, things change. High gas prices make this a little bit better off. Uh, but uh, I'm not a big fan. Uh, as I said, uh, at this price, uh, you have the next 20 years of growth already priced in. So the question is, uh, you know, as just a game theory, you want to be short this one when – uh, that uh, all that uh, pie in the sky in the future uh, changes. Uh, nothing uh, changes more quickly than yesterday's uh, day of the future. I suspect uh, long term they're going to get hit by Toyota's 
and BMW's uh, fuel cell technology. It just hasn't quite happened yet. Now, they did have an excellent high uh, or low volume test of that March 5th low. Uh, and you got it tested by on my 19th with half the volume. So you certainly wouldn't have been short there. We were looking at like right under 800. Um, haven't had any volume since then. Still don't have any volume, uh, but it doesn't matter. Um, we may see some kind of blow off top and that may be the final straw. Some kind of big giant blow off top on earnings on Wednesday. So when you can, not when you have to, we'll back tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.